When the truth's too hard to bear. I just can't believe it, man. When your life doesn't turn out as you'd planned. I'm married, I've got two kids, I'm fed up with my job, and I'm trying to climb out of the rat I found myself in. When you've lost control. <laughs> I thought I was safe. How do you cope? We all have our secrets, don't we? Now, why shouldn't we do things we wouldn't have dreamt of normally? You're amoral. Holding On continues Tuesday, 9.30 on BBC Two. Now on BBC Two, the show that loves to hate welcomes Ulrika Johnson. Guardian of something more hideous than David Mellor's passport photo. It's room 101. If it's a wine produced by the English... My guest tonight is a woman who combines the warmth and vitality of the Swedish with the sense of humour of the British. Thank God it's not the other way round. <laughs> Ulrika Johnson. A lot of your family in tonight, have you? <laughs> so this is your final choice here. Uh, but what, what ones did you have bubbling under? Um, separate hot and cold taps. You know, the... <laughs> you know, like a hot. Have you been and to Planet cold... Earth before? <laughs> a hot and a cold tap. Yeah, well, yeah we know what you meant by separate. <laughs> <laughs> they don't I didn't serve think you meant any cold purpose. And cold. So they don't. Serve yeah, you prefer any... to have them mixed up. Yeah, if you have them mixed, because with a mixer you can have cold or you can have hot, and you don't have to go. Like that. <laughs> it's fair. I never it never occurred to me. Plumbing a bit of a hobby of yours. Or... <laughs> okay. Your first official one is is a food stuff, and it's a, it's a classic choice. It's uh, mm. it's a little bit exclusive, and mere mortals like us can only really dream of owning it. Oh, yeah. But let, let's see the advert first of all, and then Ulrika can tell us why. The ambassadors' receptions are noted in society for their host's exquisite taste that captivates his guests. Ferrero Rocher, a sign of good taste. And yet, for some reason, you'd like to get rid of these things. <laughs> it's um, it's certainly not an, a, a British ad. That's very obvious from mm. the um, well, bad dubbing. The, the taps aren't separate. <laughs> And the whole idea that going to the ambassador's residence and being offered a chocolate would really piss me off. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I would want something a little bit more. But when I saw it, when I first saw that, I thought, I thought, <laughs> ambassador of where? <laughs> because that, I'm sure that's the Holiday Inn in Northampton. <laughs> but the chocolates but let's, are let's great. Give, let's give ourselves a little bit of a context. Right? Gasson. You can tuck in. And lovely. What I like about that is she's obviously looking a bit elegant. Those are stuck on, look. <laughs> but also, I wonder, you know, like, that's quite poncy. I wonder if, like, you go to Russia during the Cold War to the Russian embassy or something, and he says, you have to say, ah, beetroot. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Ambassador, you are spoiling us with your beetroot. <laughs> In Sweden, it would be pickled herring. Mm. But also, it, it's like... I'm going to have nuts in my teeth now, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> Lucky old me. <laughs> oh, let's have some more. I said, I... <laughs> How many times did I tell you, I'll do the nuts in the teeth joke? Oh, no. <laughs> but also, it wasn't always for yeah, Rocher. Right. It was a, they had to change the... Uh, Changed the advertising because it was a lot more down, to, you know, down market before that. They were originally called. <laughs> <laughs> and this was their slogan. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what, the one thing.
thing I, I like about that advert is I try to guess what they had for dinner. You know, if this was like the treat at the end, I can only think that they started off with pop tarts <laughs> <laughs> and then had mini chicken Kievs. <laughs> I'm afraid, Ulrika, I'm not going to put it in. No. no. <laughs> The thing is, you actually like the product. It's the advert oh, you don't dear. like. Oh, dear. Is that... And so, strictly speaking, you're going to have to take those away with you. Garçon! <laughs> take those to the Croatian embassy, please. <laughs> oh, dear. There you go. You take those back with you. And Harry Parkin's Nutty Balls. Do I put them in my box now? Oh, yes, in down there, please. Oh, God. So, you're oh. not disappointed, so it's, it's a bit of a bonus for you. <laughs> I'm going to need some help eating these. You don't say I never give you anything. <laughs> right, uh, a place now, and one more unpopular and disgusting than the reject bin at a haggis factory. <laughs> so where is it, exactly? It's the doctor's surgery. The doctor's waiting room. OK. Lovely. Well, um, what's primarily missing from this is the thermostat, because they're normally boiling hot. Mm. And always, they're always filled with... Um, I mean, it's very nice and it's very sweet. It's a nice idea, but the toys are so dirty and disgusting. Mm. And always these horrible chairs, like, as if to say, you're not... We're going to make you sit on these for a long time, but they're bloody uncomfortable. And amongst the toys, not that I go and play with them, obviously, um, there's always scabs, I find. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Our speakers are fine. And these horrible old, sad old plants. And... Um, of course, I'm not talking about my doctor's surgery because they're lovely there. <laughs> but the receptionists make you feel very guilty about mm. being ill. You phone up and you say, Ew, God, well, when there's no times at all. And it's like, well, I'm dying or I'm ill. You really want to need to see somebody. And they, well, we don't have any appointments for another four weeks. <clears throat> well, I've got a flu and the temperature. They really are quite... But what I find distressing about that is when you go in, like, there's always about six or seven women, aren't there, behind there, and they're having a great time when the shutter's shut. You know, they're sort of going... <laughs> <laughs> The moment they open it, it's like, we hate you! Yes! <laughs> we hate you coming in here wasting our time! But I think they're just reflecting the same feelings that you have. That you mm. sit in there and you look across and you go, nothing wrong with him. <laughs> <laughs> that old bloke's probably just come in for a chat. <laughs> That's what you would say, yeah. isn't it? Now, let's, let's actually get out a window so we can think more about it. There it is. Where, where is your doctor's again? Uh, somewhere in there. Yes! What? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you don't, we don't have one of these. Don't you? We just have a bell. Well, this is all we have. Oh, right. <laughs> I feel that we'll probably all put it in, but I'm not sure yet, because I think things have got better. If you have a look at some advice given in the 50s, this is a genuine medical advice film that they used to send out. Look at this for bedside manner. We've dealt briefly with diet. Now, what about the diabetic who has to take insulin as well? Uh, you, for example, Miss Smith. No, don't tell me. I know. <laughs> Apart from other things, you don't like the idea of having to inject yourself with insulin each day. Now, tell me, uh, you clean your teeth every day, don't you? And polish your shoes? <laughs> well, really, making an injection is just as simple as that. I suppose when you put it like that, it does seem rather silly. <laughs> <laughs> Who here polishes their shoes every day? <laughs> you. Are you in the army? Yeah. Fair enough, then. I would like to open a nice surgery where it's all lovely, nicely decorated, Colfax and Fowler wallpaper, nice carpet. Yeah, but nice then you'd have all these ill people coming in, wouldn't you? <laughs> no, it'd be sort of... Not... T I could be selective. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 of course. Everybody would be welcome. Everybody Mine would be welcome. Come. <laughs> By Ulrika Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, what I find disappointing about doctors is, is that I think mothers spoil doctors for us because you go in and what you really want them to say is, I'm feeling a bit poorly. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bit poorly. You go to bed, I'll bring you some comics up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and something eggy on a tray. <laughs> but they never say that. That's the trouble. If we go further back, I'll just warn you that the sound on this is, is a little bit... Uh, a little bit dodgy, but this is even better than the one before, I think. No, I'm all right, Jenny. Yes, I'm round to the surgery this evening. I'll be free at 6.30. It's only a little indigestion, yeah. All right. 
see you at 6.30. Goodbye. How many cups a day would you say? It's difficult to say. Well, approximately. Oh, I suppose about... Six cups a day. You mean that? Yes. Ah. Well, are you surprised you've got these books? You can trust me, Mrs. Fraser, you know. I'd like to help you, I can. This kid and another woman. <laughs> oh, step by nice. step guide to doctoring. Give them a fag, tell them their husband's having an affair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we'll definitely send these into oh, the thank you. <laughs> Okay, well done, go very well. Let's send doctor surgeries into room 101. TV channel next, and one of the very few not to make regular use of Vanessa Feltz. <laughs> Do you want to tell us briefly what it is, and then we'll have a look at, at, at a clip? Um, it's American Fitness Channels. <laughs> 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 you know, where they have um, people getting fit, <laughs> basically, <clears throat> 24 hours a day. And um, they just go from one aerobic exercise to another, and yeah. they come up with the most ridiculous expressions like, there's plenty of time to sleep when you're dead. <laughs> 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 going and uh, we're gonna make your abs so sharp they're gonna tear that shirt off and things like that and um, and all the women look like the Stepford wives they've all got the same tits and they've all got the same noses and the same eyes but they probably picked them out of a catalogue that's probably. what I, <laughs> I should think and I think you know, I just can't bear them let's have a look we've got a, this is actually a country and western fitness channel <laughs> but this is how they do it over there that's it and to the other side, feeling a good neck stretch. Hold that stretch. Oh, it feels so good. And a nice deep breath. Inhale through the nose. And exhale. <laughs> You're beautiful to live in the great old good old USA. Woo! Give yourself a big hand. You did great. Yay! <laughs> Isn't the Atlantic Ocean a brilliant thing? <laughs> God bless America. Are you quite into fitness, though? Have you got, have you got like, an exercise bike or anything yeah, like I that? Yeah, I do, actually, yeah. 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 Do you use it? And my son does. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's only two and a half. He because sits on it. We, we did a bit of a survey on exercise bikes. <laughs> <laughs> Within a year of buying an exercise bike, this many are still being used. This many are now clothes horses. Yes. <laughs> and this many are in the back of the garage next to the swing ball. <laughs> and what about, do, are you a member of the health club? Yes. Because uh, there is a definite... Lifestyles. Mm. There's a definite difference. Lifestyles. Between, this is... This is girls' kit bag. It's... <laughs> OK? All neatly folded, nice, clean kit. OK? Not mine. My Boys' kit bag. <laughs> there is, there is no doubt that the most common view, most co common sight, in the male changing rooms at any health or leisure club, is blokes going. <laughs> this is all right. This is all right. This is. <laughs> We're going to show you the, sort of the contrast between the American style and, and the British style, and I think you'll find there's a little bit of a difference. Woo! Yay! And hamstring curls. That's it. Good. And lasso. Come on. Swing it. Lasso. <laughs> I've lost. We oh, my <laughs> Oh, now you change arms and you go home. Now 
Is this for real? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> in the end, after thinking about it, I'm not going to let it into room 101, I'm afraid. Oh. God, I'm doing well. Mind you, get your pants anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so you can tell, mainly because it keeps all those horrible, sweaty joggers off the streets and, you know, at home. Oh, lovely. And also, I just happen to have brought out a fitness video of my own. <laughs> <laughs> 30 minutes a day, eating lard <laughs> will give you a body like mine. So you can take that home with you, I'm afraid, and Thank bad luck you. on that one. Nice breasts. Thanks very much. <laughs> I work out. <laughs> <laughs> now, your next choice, again, it's a bit of a difficult one to explain, but it, it, it's you, yourself, but it's you as, uh, as I don't believe has ever been seen on television before. So let's bring it round. <laughs> you must have been a beautiful baby. <laughs> Must have been a wonderful child. Can you spring that across? <laughs> Could you take the funny man out, please? Can we stand it like this? <laughs> no. <laughs> You're very sweet, Ulrika. Were you the Swedish junior sumo champion? <laughs> <laughs> I know that's harsh. It's a very sweet photograph. I'm surprised you've chosen it. Yeah, um, I'm not. Um, what's most evident from this is that I have an extra pair of breasts. <laughs> and I still have them. I thought, <laughs> I thought maybe you were looking after them for a friend. <laughs> and there's an interesting potty, isn't it? That's but a potty. I had that, yeah. Oh. I think maybe my mum had that had me strapped as so I wouldn't eat any more food. <laughs> <laughs> Do we even things up? Just to make it fair, I'll, yes. I'll show me as a child. Me? Oh, and the difference is I'm not having a shit. <laughs> <laughs> Bonniest baby at Butlin Skegness. <laughs> My mum's still holding that card. <laughs> but, um... I have it, um, I have that photo in my bathroom and every morning I get up and I look that, look at that and I say... I guess it's just fruit this morning for yeah. breakfast. <laughs> it's, it's just... I, what I hate about baby pictures is when you take girlfriend or boyfriend round to your parents and then they can't resist immediately getting yeah. out all the pictures or just saying or just saying things like over dinner, like, oh, you haven't told her the story about when you had diarrhoea at school. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. But what would worry me about a baby picture is, like, these days, probably the, the generation below mine, People must actually video the births of their children. Yes. Do you think oh, when their yes. new boyfriends come around, they show them the video oh, of them being born? Oh, can you imagine? No, that's her coming out now. No, not... No, that's a bit of my uterus. Um, <laughs> my mother would say that. I'm not being wantonly difficult. My mother, that's the sort of thing she would say. Definitely. It's bad enough. It's bad enough being there. Yeah. I, I'm not going to let this into room 101. Oh, yes. Oh, you're pleased secretly. You like this big version of it, don't you? I'm going to take it home. No, yeah. it's, it's too sweet a photograph. You can take that one as well. I'll put these away. Oh, God. Um, we've also done you, a, done, you a, done you a bit of a favour. We felt more people should see this photograph. So we had a word with the people who make those booths, you know, where you, where you have your photograph taken. <laughs> and this is the one at Victoria Station now. Oh, God. I feel a bit cruel about that, so uh, here's a bit of a bonus for you. Oh. <laughs> OK. The wow. most disgusting, irritating and odious creatures on God's earth uh, without the surname Lee Travis, now. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Are you ready? Yes, Here they I'm come. more than ready. <laughs> Yorkshire Terriers. Yorkshire Terrier. They, I, I'm, ugh, I just can't bear them. They yap. Mm -hmm. And they have these silly little bloody things here. <laughs> and they have ridiculous names. Betty! Well, no, no every single Yorkshire Betty. Terrier is named after Paula Yates' children. <laughs> <laughs> Fifi, Trixie Bell, Bell yeah. Peaches. <laughs> I actually don't like little poodles either, but I suppose. No. They're, they're the ones where they shave them. Oh, shave they're the like legs. topiaries. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you what else they're like, when they cut those hedges. 
I thought that was a really posh word. <laughs> It is a posh word. It is a posh word. It's a very posh word. Oh, yeah, so it's gorgeous. Yeah. What about the people who own them? Because a certain type of person owns them. Not well, human. I think, it's, but I think it's not like a. Not like a fist. <laughs> it's not like a serious dog owner's oh, dog, no, is no, it? Oh, no, no, exactly. For exactly. God's sake. It's a... Well, that's what I always think about them being called Yorkshire Terriers, like all those blokes in Yorkshire thinking, yeah, our yeah. dog's the Yorkshire Terrier. <laughs> hey, lad. Come on, lad. Bite the bugger. <laughs> Does anybody have a Yorkshire Terrier? Of course they do. Anybody here? Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> what are they called? Oh, Winston. <laughs> well, let's have a look. Yes. <laughs> that reminds me of one of the giants of British politics. <laughs> I'm sure Winston Churchill's family would be delighted to hear that you called your what Yorkshire Terrier Winston. What was yours called? Tyson. Tyson? <laughs> It's good you should say Tyson. I used to live in a block of flats in Streatham, and the bloke next to us, tiny flat, top floor we were, and he had three Alsatians, <laughs> right? But they, you know, they weren't to make him seem hard, all right? Despite the fact they were called Tyson, Satan and Beast. <laughs> That's actually true. Let's, let's have a look at uh, some of these dogs on show. We've got a poodle here and a, and a Yorkshire Terrier. This is Crofts a few years ago. Oh! It's a super, <laughs> uh, tremendous camera. It really does have a really That's not a dog. Is that the... No, it's no that's a bloke, but behind the bloke. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Look at its arse! Well, you want to look at... The... Oh! You wait for the arse on the next one. Lovely <laughs> foxy expression. He too. Ah! That's not an arse, that's a target. Just <laughs> looking <laughs> Now, this, no. these... That's a long-haired Yorkshire yeah. Terrier. These ones you can train to be a hoover. Oh, <laughs> that is... Wow. I've always I've, I've wondered what they must have been like in the wild. <laughs> Eat, to... Eaten quite a lot. Yes, I think so, yeah. Mmm, <laughs> Yorkie. <laughs> <laughs> um, should we let it in? Should we let it in? Yeah. No. Go oh! <laughs> Why? You said you hate them yourself. Yes, I know, but the thing is that when Jermaine Greer was on this programme, she chose dogs' bollocks. <laughs> now, if we were to put Yorkshire Terriers in with dogs' bollocks, they could breed. <laughs> and I'm not willing to take that risk. <laughs> so you take that home, and you can give it away for next Christmas. God, I... I know you'll be keeping the Ferrero Rocher, though. <laughs> yeah. On the subject of which... <laughs> Just think how many we're all going to have. The schoolgirl's friend now. The second most uh, popular activity amongst uh, adolescents after squeezing blackheads, I believe. <laughs> Let's bring it round and you can tell us your problem with it. Let's say what it is first and foremost. Um, school hockey. Oh, no, I need no, leave one, that don't one. I? All right, then. I've done it all wrong. It's not good. <laughs> You're doing very, very well. Doing my top 50 guests so far. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had 50 what? guests? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Ooh. hockey, what's your problem with it? Um, apart from the fact that I hate it and it's always played when it was freezing cold at school, I never made the team and I'm not bitter. Mm. Um, <laughs> Would you want to have been in the team? No. Right. But I did at the time. Because well, I... obviously not now. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to phone call. I'm sorry, can you come back to school, please? <laughs> We've got a very big game against St Olaf's. <laughs> <laughs> At the time. At the time. Mm. Um, it's always wet and cold and you play in those silly skirts and... Oh, I hated it. I hated it. I hated the smell of when we'd come in and change afterwards and, oh, I hated it. See, it's difficult for me to talk, you see, because I, I have to admit, I was a PE teacher, so... <gasps> mm. Were you? You only ever taught one thing as a PE teacher, and I don't know whether... This is a phrase you used to get at school. It's to All PE teachers, yeah. <laughs> well, no, that's you, you can't get into training college without being a bastard. <laughs> Once you get there, you spend four years learning to shout, "Stop bunching!" <laughs> that's all you learn. Yeah. Did, did your PE teachers have a separate room? Because that's a great thing about being a PE teacher. You, you had a separate room from the other members of staff. Oh, I don't know. Which oh, was full of mud, dirty. Yeah. <laughs> but it was the place where this thing was kept, which every school has but no-one's ever used. 
the a medicine pumpkin. ball. <laughs> I don't think you're allowed to be called to school unless you have a medicine ball. <laughs> but no one ever ever uses it. And the other good thing about being a PE teacher is that you're allowed to have favourites. You know, yes. All, all other teachers yes. try really hard to be fair. And Nicola PE teachers... Saunders. <laughs> <laughs> well, be fair. She's a bloody hard worker. <laughs> She was just very good at all the sports. Well, that's and they used to destroy you to say, right, Nicola and Alison, pick the teams. And you'd be like, standing there at the end, <laughs> waiting to be picked. Well, I can see it's destroyed your self-confidence. <laughs> <laughs> but I just love the way that P teachers are so, they're so obvious about their favourites. They'll go, oh, yeah. right, everyone in, the, everyone in the shower, come on, all of you, in that shower, and no turning on the hot taps. <laughs> Cigarette, Jones? <laughs> <laughs> Play for the county this weekend, aren't you, lad? It's always that sort of Definitely, thing. Definitely, yeah. Brilliantly unfair. I like it very much. But the only thing that male P teachers, all kids out there, all girls out there, the one way to be sure of getting out of lessons, male P teachers are frightened of the phrase, it's my time of the month. Period, <laughs> yeah. They, they, they want to just give you their money. <laughs> just, uh, here, have everything. <laughs> have my house. Have my food. Spray them. Yeah. <laughs> We can have a look at some, some of the training skills that you need to learn to play hockey properly. And then I think we'll see how they're applied in a match situation. It's all about getting the ball and body in harmony. This is a key factor in our next skill, beating an opponent. Oh. Do you know what that bloke was wearing? I think that was Pakistan versus the Power Rangers. <laughs> Do we feel it should go in? I think most people have horrendous stories of PE, but hockey is bad. Yeah, I think I might put it in to pay penance for my days as a PE teacher. Yeah, I think you should. Mm -hmm. it was, uh, <laughs> See? OK, let's pop the medicine ball on there. What's it? It's a dangerous game. And you look, look who these sticks are made by. <laughs> you may remember the terrible hockey sticks to Iraq problem. <laughs> OK, have a little listen. Well done. And you've got hockey to go into Room 101. Music was my first love And it will be my last Right. I, th I feel that you've done well enough to have a bonus item, cos I've been a bit harsh on you, actually. So, uh, if you'd like to pick one of the ones that I've rejected... Oh, there's no doubt. Yeah, what have you got in there? You've got Yorkshire Terriers, you've got... Yorkshire Terriers will go in, and thank you very much to Ulrika Johnson. <laughs> well, our final clip from Room 101 was a finalist in the world's ugliest dance routine competition. Keep an eye on the follically challenged man in the background. <laughs> Wait until the stars come out. <laughs> See the twinkle in your eyes. Midnight hour, that's when the love begins to shine. I'm gonna get a holy girl and know. <laughs> I feel it on the Lord and so in the midnight hour. Oh, yeah, in the midnight hour. Hey, I'm gonna wait till the stars come out. I see them twinkle in your eyes. I'm gonna wait till the midnight hour. That's when the love begins to shine Are you the only girl I know? I'm really gonna love you so In the midnight hour Oh yeah! In the midnight hour This is Ronnie Size, and you can catch myself and all of the Represent Unit playing straight out of Maydevelle Studios this coming Saturday. This will be broadcast on Radio 1 and BBC2 live. Madness first on BBC One, Omnibus profiles Reeves and Mortimer.